During the Japanese colonial period, all 32 piers of the Shi Luo Bridge were constructed, but the bridge itself was yet to be built. After World War II erupted, the Japanese government transferred the seal intended for the bridge construction for military use. Post World War II, Li Yingtang was elected senator of the Tainan County Legislature. As soon as he assumed office, Li Yingtang proposed to complete construction of the Xi Luo Bridge on several occasions. He also teamed up with Liao Chong Guang, then chairman of the Xi Luo Bridge Construction Alliance. Together they petitioned for continuation of bridge construction and asked that the proposal be passed on to the Taiwan Provincial Legislature. During the months of May and June 1948, the provincial governor Wei Daoming came to inspect Xi Luo twice. Li Yingtang took advantage of this opportunity to present his petition for the continuation of the construction of the Xi Luo Bridge. Despite his relentless effort, the government repeatedly rejected his proposal due to high construction costs. In September of 1949, Li Yingtang's good friend and fellow alumnus of Doshisha University High School and University, Reverend Tsai Ai Zhi, returned from the United States. Tsai told him about the availability of U.S. foreign aid and suggested that Li seek U.S. assistance for the bridge construction. Li Yingtang then sent a letter directly to the U.S. Economic Cooperation Administration to petition for U.S. aid. Li Yingtang took the drafting of the letter very seriously. He traveled to Tainan to ask fellow alumnus Xiao Renzi's assistance with the English writing. Xiao majored in English at Doshishan University and was good in English. However, Li was not satisfied with the letter drafted by Xiao. Li then wrote it himself and went to Tainan again to have Xiao edit the letter. At that time, there were very few typewriters in Taiwan. After the petition was drafted, Li asked another alumnus of Doshisha, Mr. Ling Chengzhao, who worked at the U.S. Information Service in Tainan, to type the letter. After the letter was typed, Li Yingtang brought the letter from Tainan to Taipei and delivered it to the Taipei office of the U.S. Economic Cooperation Administration. Li Yingtang's health deteriorated during the drafting of the petition. He had a high fever almost on a daily basis. Traveling between Tainan and Xi Luo was not easy and took half a day. After the letter was completed, he then traveled to Taipei. Most people in good health would have suffered from all the travels, let alone someone who was sick. His wife would often say, you die working this hard. The instrumental letter played an important role. On May 10, 1950, the U.S. Department of State approved the aid package. In spring of 1951, the U.S. government wired $1.13 million into Li Yingtang's account. Li Yingtang immediately transferred the money to a government account for purchase of steel for bridge construction. Going back to May 1949, as Guomingdang troops retreated to Taiwan, the 3rd Battalion Armored Regiment arrived in Kaohsiung Port and planned to move up to northern Taiwan. However, they were not able to cross the Zhuoshui River when they arrived in Xiluo, and the battalion stationed in Xiluo instead. The battalion commander was Xu Guangsheng, and the commander of the armored forces was Xu Qingyao, and the deputy commander was Jiang Weiguo, son of Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. Li Yingtang was then mayor of Xiluo Township and provided logistical support to settle the battalion. He installed electricity and water at classrooms located in the Xiluo Elementary School. In addition, Li provided his official mayor residence to the battalion commander and his family. He also kept one of the rooms as a guest room. Whenever General Jiang Wei Guo inspected Xi Luo, he would stay at the guest room at the mayor's official residence. This is how General Jiang and Li became acquainted. I think there's not a doggy sound. Unknown to most people, Li has kept a newspaper clipping of General Jiang Wei Guo in the scrapbook. The article from between 1930 to 1931, when Li studied in Japan, was written when the general was still a little boy. 
The article must have interested Lee, and he saved the article. Who would have known that 18 to 19 years later, the two of them would meet and become good friends? During Lee's lifetime, General Jiang Wei Guo played a pivotal role on two occasions. The first one was to help with the construction of the bridge. As the proposal to construct Xi Luo Bridge stalled, Lee petitioned to the Armored Forces Commander on multiple occasions. He was trying to reach top level government officials through General Jiang Wei Guo after the provincial government decided to postpone indefinitely the construction of the Xi Luo Bridge. Li Tang received help from General Jiang Wei Guo and was able to bring the blueprint designed by the Japanese engineers to meet with Generalissimo Chiang Kai shek. Li emphasized the importance of Xi Luo Bridge politically, militarily, economically, and culturally. Through Li's efforts, Chiang Kai shek agreed to begin work to complete the construction of the bridge. Upon the completion of the Xi Luo Bridge, Zhanghua County and Yunlin County disputed over the naming of the bridge. Zhanghua County wanted Zhang Yun Bridge, while Yunlin County preferred Yunzhang Bridge. Xizhou Village preferred Xi Xi Bridge, and Xi Luo Township wanted Xi Xi Bridge. The naming controversy finally settled on the name Xi Luo Bridge, which was the name used by Li Tang in his petition for U.S. aid and the name U.S. President Harry Truman used when he announced in Congress the U.S. assistance for the bridge construction. Early summer in 1951, Li Yingtang was accused of conspiring with a Taiwanese independence leader, Liao Wen Yi. He was arrested and brought to Jiayi by the police. Mrs. Li, Li's uncle Zhang Chongyue, and Li's good friend Dr. Liao Qingjiang departed for Dou Liu to take the train to Taichung to visit General Jiang Wei Guo. When they arrived in Dou Liu, the group inadvertently took the wrong train. They realized their mistake when they arrived in Qingshui and returned to Zhanghua. When they were at the Zhanghua train station, a tall man wearing sunglasses tapped Mrs. Li's on her shoulder, saying in Japanese, Oksama dokoe kun desu ka? Mrs. Lee, where are you going? Mrs. Lee took a look at the man and was pleasantly surprised to see him. He was General Jiang Wei Guo's deputy. Mrs. Lee was educated in the Japanese system and did not speak Mandarin. General Jiang's deputy, Mr. Dong, was the only one who could speak Japanese in the battalion that stationed in Xi Luo. Dong told her that General Jiang split his time between Taipei and Taichung and that he was in Taipei at the moment. Dong told Mrs. Lee that he would tell, let the general know and ask the general for help. Dong also gave Mrs. Lee the phone number and address of General Jiang and asked them to take the train to Taipei immediately. By the time Mrs. Lee and company met with General Jiang the following morning, General Jiang informed them that Lee was released earlier that morning.